The Indian ambassador to Argentina met with the chief of joint staff of the Argentine Armed Forces yesterday, and they discussed cooperation and exchanges in defense sector between two strategic partners. Officials of Argentine Air Force will arrive in India in October, to conduct deep evaluation of the Tejas aircraft. The Argentine Air Force chief has said, that if JF-17 is selected, then logistical support from China is a big question mark. India had agreed to replace British Martin Baker ejection seat with Russian ejection seats, while China had agreed to replace the British Martin Baker ejection seat with a Chinese ejection seat, and interestingly, Argentine officials have now said, that instead of going for Chinese or Russian ejection seats on the aircraft that are on offer, it would prefer the ACES to American ejection seat. India still has the option to equip the ACES to American ejection seat, that will require design changes to the aircraft canopy, and also create special training and repair manuals for the ground crew before it can be recertified for the new ejection seat, but there is no chance that the US will allow to equip its ejection seat on the Chinese JF-17. The Indian Air Force plans to upgrade Su-30 fighter jets with Indian-made avionics ACE radar and weapons so that they remain relevant, till 2045, after which the Su-30 fleet will be replaced with a 6th generation heavy class fighter jet. India has started metal cutting of 5.5 generation AMCA fighter jet, and officials have said, that the focus will start shifting towards 6th generation successor from early 2030 onwards. United States, China and France have started work on 6th generation fighter jets that will go into production between 2035 to 2045, and it is important that India also starts preliminary research work on 6th generation fighters, so that it can become a reality by 2045. The Indian Army could place a repeat order for 200 more K-9 Vajra 155mm tracked self-propelled howitzers at the upcoming Defence Expo 2022, and the Ministry of Defence has already begun moving paperwork for the purchase worth 10,000 crore rupees. Larsen and Tubro will also pitch the K-10 automatic resupply vehicle, which is must for the effective operation of the K-9 Vajra as it carries 104 shells of 155 mm and 504 units of charges, and has the capability to transfer ammunition at 12 rounds per minute. The High Commissioner of India in South Africa has inaugurated the BrahMos Aerospace Pavilion, on the inaugural day of Africa Aerospace and Defence Expo 2022. Officials have said, that the African region is now a major focus for the sale of the 300 km range variant of the BrahMos supersonic missile, and BrahMos Aerospace is now targeting both naval and coastal defense requirements in the region. South Africa had expressed interest to procure the BrahMos naval variant, that could be equipped on the four Valor class frigates of the South African Navy. Hindustan Shipyard Limited has launched two diving support vessels today, that has been indigenously designed and built for the Indian Navy for deep sea diving and submarine rescue operations. With approximately 80% indigenous content, the two ships are equipped with side scan sonars and remotely operated vehicles, and it can carry out helicopter operations on the high seas, and can undertake sustained operational deployments for a period of 60 days. The ISRO has announced its plans to start work on the development of a heavy reusable launch vehicle, after it completes work on modified GSLV Mark III for the Gaganyaan program. The ISRO will use the public-private partnership model for the manufacturing of a heavy lift launch vehicle, that can perform vertical takeoff and vertical landing. Oh, Mark,